Hello and welcome to In Depth. I'm Smriti Rastogi. Amid escalating tensions between India and Pakistan following the Pulwama terror attack, the Ministry of External Affairs handed over a dossier to Acting High Commissioner of Pakistan, Syed Haider Shah. The dossier has specific details on the involvement of Jaish e Mohammed in February 14th Pulwama terror attack on CRPF. It also detailed the presence of camps of the UN proscribed terror outfit in the neighboring country. But it was not the first time that India gave such a dossier to Pakistan on wanted terrorists. India shared information with Pakistan on terror group Lashkar e Taiba after 26 11 terror attack as well. Multiple dossiers on Lashkar founder Hafiz Saeed and his role in Terror Blast were given to Pakistan. A dossier was handed even after the Pathan court attack. But before that, information was shared on underworld Don Daud Ibrahim as well. Over the last several decades, such dossiers have become a formality. Pakistan has not done anything on this. Today, in in-depth, we look at the list of terrorists and criminals wanted by India and who are residing in Pakistan. Masood Azhar, the man behind the Pulwama attack, has been unleashing terror on Indian soil, especially Jammu and Kashmir, for almost two decades now. Azhar established Jaish e Mohammed soon after he was released from prison in India in exchange for prisoners of hijacked flight IC-814. And ever since, he has masterminded several terror strikes on India, including the attack on Jammu and Kashmir Assembly and the Indian Parliament in 2001. Despite India's repeated demands for handing him over, Masood Azhar continues to live a free man at his home in Bhawalpur in Pakistan. The Indian government released Harkatul Mujahideen terrorist Masood Azhar along with two other terrorists in December 1999 in exchange for the release of the passengers of the hijacked Indian Airlines flight IC-814. At the time, the government had an idea that the move may cost them. Innocent men, women and children have been criminally kept confined during this festive season and the period of light and joy for more than a week. We had stated at the very beginning that our primary concern was the earliest termination of the hijacking and the safe return of all passengers and crew. And their worst fears came true when Masood Azhar set up the jaish e Mohammed to fight Indian forces in Kashmir with the support of Pakistan's intelligence agency, ISI. However, it was only in 2001 that India realized what this dreaded terror mastermind was capable of. In his first major strike on Indian soil, Masood Azhar launched an attack on the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly complex in Srinagar. On October 1, 2001, three jaish e Mohammed suicide bombers rammed a Tata Sumo loaded with explosives into the main gate of the complex, killing 38 people. Masood Azhar was named prime suspect in the parliament attack on 13 December 2001 as well, in which nine people were killed when five terrorists belonging to jaish e Mohammed and lashkar e Taiba drove into the parliament complex and opened fire. India asked Pakistan to hand over Masood Azhar, but the request was turned down. The only time Pakistani authorities arrested Masood Azhar was after the US and the UK banned jaish e Mohammed. He was arrested in December 2001, but released a year later. India sought the arrest and handover of Masood Azhar along with Hafiz Saeed and several others for their involvement in the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks. But once again, Pakistan refused to act against Masood Azhar, the terror ideologue celebrated among the terror groups in Pakistan and POK. The Pak government merely confined Masood Azhar to his home in Bahawalpur in the South Punjab province. There is no credibility whatsoever in what Pakistan says. They are saying Masood Azhar is very seriously ill to the extent that he can't even step out of the house. 
if that be so, Mazood Asar has often been seen in various rallies. Where, where is he has been giving huge amount of, he has been motivating the Pakistani people to act against India. He has been inspiring the jihadis. He has been visiting jihadi terrorist trading organizations and he has himself been supervising the terrorist trading. Under the circumstances, if, if he was so unwell, how could he have done all that? Masood Azhar was born in Bahawalpur in Pakistan in 1968. His father, Allah Baksh Shabbir, was the headmaster at a government school. He studied at the Jamia Uloom Ul Islamia Banuri town in Karachi, where he got involved with the Harkatul Ansar. After suffering injuries in the Soviet Afghan war, Azhar was made the general secretary of Harkatul Ansar. He travelled the world to recruit and raise funds for the outfit. His travels took him to Zambia, Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, Mongolia, UK and Albania, among other places. In 1993, Azhar travelled to Kenya to meet with leaders of al Ittihad al-Islamiyah and Al-Qaeda-aligned Somali group. In August 1993, Masood Azhar visited the UK to spread the message of jihad. In early 1994, Masood Azhar travelled to Srinagar to ease tensions between Harkat ul Ansar's feuding factions of Harkat ul Jihad al Islami and Harkat ul Mujahideen. He was arrested in Srinagar in February 1994 for his terrorist activities with the groups. Five years after his arrest, Masood Azhar's brother Ibrahim Athar led the hijack of IC 814 and got him released. After the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks, Masood Azhar laid low for almost six years. During this time, he continued to live in Bahawalpur. On January 26, 2014, Masood Azhar reappeared after staying away for six years. He addressed a rally in Muzaffarabad calling for the resumption of jihad in Kashmir. On 2nd January 2016, six heavily armed terrorists dressed in Indian Army uniforms attacked the Pathan Court Air Force Station. All six terrorists and seven security personnel were killed in the gun battle that lasted till 5th January. Masood Azhar and his brother Abdul Rauf Ghazgar were identified as the mastermind behind the dastardly attack. Masood Azhar's outfit is also suspected to be behind the Uri terror attack on 18th September 2016, when four terrorists attacked an Indian Army Brigade headquarters in Uri in a pre-dawn ambush. Nineteen soldiers and all four terrorists were killed in the attack. With the Pulwama attack, jaish e muhammad has reared its ugly head yet again, and it's high time the terror mastermind is brought to book before he unleashes terror on Indian soil again. With inputs from Astha Kulshreshth, Bureau Report, Raja Sabha TV. The man behind the attack on the parliament, the Mumbai terror attacks and many other deadly attacks on the Indian soil is a free man in Pakistan. For many years now, India has been asking Pakistan to hand over terror mastermind Hafiz Saeed. But despite irrefutable evidence, Pakistan continues to flip-flop on the issue of Saeed's extradition. A terror attack that shook India. A series of coordinated attacks at various locations in Mumbai that held the city to ransom for 60 hours. And this is the man who planned and executed the dastardly terror attack. Hafiz Muhammad Saeed, a Pakistani terror mastermind co-founder of Pakistan's deadliest terror outfit lashkar e taiba and chief of the jamaat ud dawa which again is a front for Lashkar. Both UN-designated terrorist organizations operating from Pakistan, both behind multiple terror attacks on Indian soil, killing hundreds of people. Hafiz Saeed himself is an internationally designated terrorist but holds massive influence in Pakistan among religious groups. Hafiz Saeed was born in Sargodha in Punjab in June 1950. During partition, his family had migrated to Lahore in Pakistan. They lost over 30 members while migrating. Saeed was sent to Saudi Arabia for higher studies in the early 1980s by the university where he was teaching. The sheikhs taking part in Afghan Jihad inspired Saeed to take an active role supporting the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. 
in 1985, Hafiz Muhammad Saeed and Zafar Iqbal formed the Jamaat ud Dawa. In 1987, Hafiz Saeed founded the terrorist group Markaz Dawa Wal Irshad. This organization paved the way for formation of the jihadist group Lashkar e Taiba in 1990 in Afghanistan's Kunar province, whose primary target was the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Since inception, Lashkar e Taiba started setting up terror camps in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir for the sole purpose of training youths as jihadis to spread terror in the state. From 1991 onwards, militancy surged in Kashmir. On December 13, 2001, Hafiz Saeed's Lashkar e Taiba with the help of Masood Azhar's Jaish-e Mohammed launched an attack on the Indian Parliament, killing 9 people. Pakistan was forced to take Hafiz Saeed into custody a week after the attack due to India's assertion of his involvement. Just 3 months later, the terrorist was released and then arrested again in May. In October 2002, Pakistan government put him under house arrest. In 2006, after the Mumbai train bombings, India called for Hafiz Saeed's arrest. Pakistan placed him under house arrest in August 2006. He was released in October 2006 after a Lahore High Court order. Hafiz Saeed remained a free man in Pakistan despite India's efforts to get him arrested. On 26 November 2008, Hafiz Saeed unleashed his deadliest attack on Mumbai, killing 164 people. After 2611, India submitted a formal request to the United Nations Security Council to put Jamaat ud Dawa and Hafiz Saeed on the list of people and groups sanctioned by the United Nations for association with terrorism. On 11th December 2008, Hafiz Saeed was again placed under house arrest after the UN declared Jamaat ud Dawa to be an LET front. In June 2009, the Lahore High Court ordered Hafiz Saeed to be released. India expressed its disappointment with the decision. On 25th August 2009, Interpol issued a red corner notice against Hafiz Saeed along with Zakiur Rahman Lakhvi in response to Indian requests for his extradition. Hafiz Saeed was once again placed under house arrest by the Pakistani authorities in September 2009. In October 2009 the Lahore High Court quashed all cases against Hafiz Muhammad Saeed and set him free. The court also notified that Jamaat ud Dawa is not a banned organization and can work freely in Pakistan. In April 2012 the United States announced a bounty of 10 million dollars on Saeed for his alleged role in the 2008 Mumbai attacks in which 6 Americans were also killed. For many years India has been seeking Hafiz Saeed's extradition but Pakistan continues to ignore India's requests and Hafiz Saeed the terror mastermind continues to roam freely in Pakistan planning more heinous acts of terror bureau report rajya sabha tv and with that we'll slip into a very quick break stay with us Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. are the remains of what was once a magnificent fort that laid the foundation of Tughlaq dynasty which ruled Delhi Sultanate for nearly a century. Built on the southwest of the then existing capital of Delhi Sultanate, the historic city of Mehroli, 
tughlaqabad was established in 1321 by the founder of tughlaq dynasty ghiyasuddin tughlaq the fortress of tughlaqabad delhi's fourth city was built on the highland and had 13 gates tall ramparts broad pavilions which stored arsenal as well as provisions for the tughlaq army fortress-like city was built keeping in mind to ward off the advancing Mughal raiders from the northwest frontier. But the grand city suffered the fate of time as it was soon abandoned after the death of Qiyasuddin Tughlaq. His successor, Muhammad bin Tughlaq, briefly decided to ship the capital to Deccan. Welcome back. India's most wanted criminal, Daud Ibrahim, is also being harboured by Pakistan. A gangster and a terrorist, Ibrahim is a prime accused in the 1993 Mumbai serial blast case. He is a global designated terrorist with a reward of $25 million on his head. From the UK to the UAE and Indian police to Interpol, everyone is looking for him. The list of India's most wanted terrorists starts with Daud Ibrahim. He is the main accused in the 1993 serial blasts in Mumbai and for many years he has been living in Karachi, Pakistan. In 2016, a United Nations committee confirmed that the man India has been hunting for for over two decades was shielded by Pakistan. Daud's brother Iqbal Kaskar was arrested by the Thane police in 2017 he told the police that Daud lives in a palatial mansion in Karachi. He and his family members own four to five bungalows in the same neighborhood and have a tight security cover. India gave a dossier on Daud to Pakistan with details of his nine houses in Pakistan and their locations, including an ISI safe house. Like for example, Daud Abraham, they continue to maintain that he's not in Pakistan. Where have these given foolproof evidence to the United Nations indicating that he's in Pakistan in Karachi, along with the addresses, which has been confirmed by the UN agencies. But Pakistan still does not agree to the fact that he's there. The story of Daud Ibrahim has been the subject of many Bollywood movies. He was born into a modest family in Ratnagiri district of Maharashtra in 1955. His father, Ibrahim Keskar, was head constable in the Mumbai police. At a young age, Daud Ibrahim took to small-time smuggling and violence. When he was 19 years old, Dawood committed his first major crime. He and his group conducted one of the biggest bank robberies in Bombay and never looked back since then. By the end of the 1980s, Dawood dominated the Bombay Mafia. His group D Company was the most powerful gang. Dawood fled India in 1986 after non-bailable warrants were issued against him. He set up base in Dubai, establishing multiple chains of D Company businesses his business interests spread to a dozen countries across Europe, Africa and South Asia. Besides India and Pakistan, Daud Ibrahim's companies have flourishing businesses in the UK, Germany, Turkey, France, Spain, Morocco, Cyprus, UAE, South Africa, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Thailand, Malaysia and Singapore. In the UK alone, Daud has assets worth $450 million. He is reported to have invested in over 50 properties in different countries. According to Forbes, Daud Ibrahim is one of the richest gangsters of all time. In 2015, Forbes estimated his net asset worth at $6.7 billion. After moving to Pakistan in 1993, Daud got involved knee-deep in terrorism. He deepened links with several terror groups like the Lashkar-e-Toiba and Al-Qaeda. Today, he sits at the top of the largest organized crime syndicate in South and Southeast Asia. In 2003, the United States designated Daud Ibrahim as a global terrorist for his links with the Al-Qaeda terror group. He carries a bounty of $25 million on his head. 
He also finds mention in the UN security sanctions list as an associate of Osama bin Laden's terror group, Al-Qaeda. The United Kingdom also froze his assets in the country, including his residential properties in the Midlands and a hotel in Warwickshire. Daud Ibrahim's D company operates on a fusion model of criminal and terror activities. Even today, the group is involved in activities like extortion, smuggling, narcotics trafficking and contract killing. Another flourishing business of the group is illegal trade in diamonds from South Africa, from where his close associate Chota Shakil is reported to be operating. Match fixing is also reported to be one of the main businesses of the D company. In 2011, intelligence agencies linked the D company to the 2G Spectrum scam. Recent reports of Daud Ibrahim being seriously ill led to speculations about the successor of his sprawling business empire. While some reports claim his brother Anis would inherit the transcontinental business of the most wanted international terrorist, others hinted at a more equitable sharing of Daud Ibrahim's assets among his family members and trusted aides. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Lashkar-e Taiba Chief Hafiz Saeed, Hijbul Mujahideen Chief Sayed Salaudi, and 2611 attacks mastermind Zaki Ur Rahman Lakwi are some of the high profile names that figure in the National Investigation Agency's most wanted list. The list was prepared in consultation with the Central Bureau of Investigation, the NIA and Intelligence Bureau and various other law enforcement agencies. In May 2011, after the killing of Osama bin Laden, India released a list of its 50 most wanted fugitives it alleged were hiding in Pakistan. The list was made in consultation with the Central Bureau of Investigation, the NIA, the Intelligence Bureau and other law enforcement agencies. It contained Interpol red corner notices, details of crimes, aliases, Pakistani passports and identity document numbers of those allegedly hiding in Pakistan. The list has a very large number of fugitives and terrorists when it's running into approximately 258 terrorists. But what is the terrorists that are held with Pakistan, which are of critical importance to India, are the following. Dawood Ibrahim, Hafiz Saeed, Lakfi, Salaluddin, Masood Azhar. These are amongst those on which there can be no compromise whatsoever. Then another one is a, one of the majors who is involved in planning of the Mumbai attack. So these are the six that we definitely want Pakistan to hand over and or in a very transparent manner proceed against them to the entire satisfaction of India in a credible manner. The names on the list include Ilyas Kashmiri, also called as Maulana Ilyas Kashmiri. As a senior Al Qaeda operator and leader of Halkat ul Jihad al Islami. He was also connected with the Soviet Afghan War, the Kashmir conflict, and attacks against India and the US. On 10 May 2012, the United Nations Security Council officially labeled Kashmiri as reportedly deceased. However, a red corner notice is issued against him. Zaki ul Rahman Lakwi is a top leader of the militant group. Lashkar e Taiba and currently serves as the Supreme Commander of Operations in Kashmir and as a member of LET's General Council. The NIA has issued a red corner notice against him. Chota Shakil is a high ranking leader of Daud Ibrahim's company. He joined the D company in 1988 and is reportedly responsible for managing day to day operations of the criminal group with the protection of the Pakistani ISI. Shakil became one of the most wanted men in India after his alleged participation in the 1993 Bombay bombing. He is also wanted by the US government for international drug trafficking. Ibrahim Mushtaq Abdul Razak Nadim Memon, better known as Tiger Memon, is a primary suspect in the 1993 Mumbai bomb blast case. He is wanted by Interpol and the Central Bureau of Investigation. He is a member of D Company, a gang led by Daud Ibrahim. Syed Muhammad Yusuf Shah, popularly known as Syed Salauddin, heads the Hijbul Mujahideen, a militant organization and head of the Alliance of Anti-India Militant Groups, the United Jihad Council, that works to annex Jammu and Kashmir to Pakistan. 
He is listed on the NIA Most Wanted list. On June 26, 2017, he was named as a specially designated global terrorist by the US Department of State. Abdul Subhan Qureshi is a suspected bomb maker and one of the most wanted terrorists in India and has been called India's Bin Laden. He is suspected to be associated with the Students' Islamic Movement of India and is suspected to have been responsible for participating in the Bangalore, Ahmedabad and Delhi bombing. He is also a suspect in the 11th July 2006 Mumbai train bombing. Abdul Rahman Hashim Saeed, also known as Pasha, is a retired major in the Pakistan Army. He is accused of involvement with terrorism and listed on NIA's most wanted list. A red corner notice has been issued against him. Similar lists had been given to Pakistan in 2004, 2007, 2010 and March 2011. However, then Home Minister P. Chidambaram stated in May 2011 that they never acted on any list and were always dismissive and described the process as a ritual. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, that's all we have for you in this edition. Thank you for watching.